Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Elevate Your Life podcast. We are doing episode number 97 today, Cheryl. Wow. Oh, my gosh. We are getting so close to 100. Yeah. But just to think that it's 97. That is just so many. Oh, my gosh. And they've all been great. They're loud. They've all been life-changing. I will tell you this. They have all been fun and very informative. That's what we yeah. do. It's just, yes. Cheryl, that's just who we are. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So in our podcast coming up, uh, the reason why we said that is because today is Leadership Thursday, but next Tuesday, we're going to release a podcast on identity, and uh, we're going to talk about the, the power of identity and how important that is. But today, Cheryl, we're going to talk about, uh, we're continuing our, like I said, uh, our leadership uh, journey here, a series we're doing on the 21 Laws of Leadership. We're reading out of the 25th edition of the 21 Laws of, Law, 21 Laws of Leadership book by John Maxwell. It just got released on like June 1st. So it's been out like for a couple of months. Um, and it's what right now we're doing law number six. So you get, you have time to catch up. You can go to elevateyourlife.com to get the notes from this podcast and all the other ones are all listed there. And um, today's law number six, which is the law of solid ground, Cheryl. Yeah, I love, I, I love this law, even though, I didn't even know, you know, sometimes when you read the laws, you know exactly what, oh yeah, I know what that means. I know, I, you know, navigation, I knew what that meant, right? But this one, I was kind of like the law of solid ground, what on earth? But we found out, or I found out that it just means that trust is the foundation of leadership. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's, um, you know, we think of trust, you think of, well, I don't lie. Like people can trust me, like, you know, I'll be, I'm honest, but that's, there's way more to it than just honesty, you know, <laughs> and we're going right. to dive into all those things today and how people can really trust you as a leader, you know, so, so all the laws of leadership, all 21 of them are equal. There's not like, well, that's the most important one, or that's more important than that one. There's, it's not that way. They're all important and you need to master all of them to be a great leader. But this one, you know, if you don't have this one, None of the others matter. If you don't, right. if people, if no you don't trust you, you, you. Can just throw the other 20 in the garbage. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Nobody would be following you, right? It just wouldn't work out. So we know that the most important thing that you can do as a leader is build that trust. So let's talk about some ways, I guess, that we can build that trust. And, it, and of course, Paul, what I love about this is it's let's ask a question or two, yeah. right? Because we always talk about the importance of asking questions. Yeah, people are so, always asking questions to themselves about yeah. you or me or their leader. And right. Ask, if you're a leader, people are asking these questions about you. But not right. out loud, but at least subconsciously. That's right. And the first one that, um, the first question that people ask themselves, right? About you, just like Paul said, um, or about about the leader, or if they're even choosing to follow someone, is do you care about me? And I like that. Um, and and we, I love this saying. You know, people don't know, don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I really do. I, I love that saying. And I do, Paul, believe that that is really true. That's where it starts. That's where it yeah. starts for sure. Yep. And then number two is, can you help me? And I, I, I thought that was so interesting when I very first heard this, when I was like, can you help me? Is that what really what people are asking? And I do believe that it is like in, in whatever, whatever it is, right. Can you help me get healthy? Can yep. you help me um, on my, on my journey to entrepreneurship? Can yep. you help me achieve my goals? Right. So all of those things, can you help me? Lose weight. And, yeah. Right. So leaders help people elevate their lives. You have to know as a leader how to do that, how to help others, right, um, along their journey. And then the third one is, can I trust you? Yeah, and again, Cheryl, this I, is, you would, my first yeah. thought is, can I trust you? Like, will you be honest with me? But being honest isn't, I mean, of course, that's important. But what, what really, uh, what we're saying here in leadership is are you trying to benefit yourself or me? You know, and I'm always skeptical on people. I, I catch myself doing this. Like, 
this guy recommended this stock to me. Well, maybe you're making the most commission on that stock. That's why you recommended that one to me. Like, why did, like, you know, there's something in it for you that's really good because you're selling me, trying to sell me on it. Right. So is this, are you trying to benefit me or are you, are you looking out for yourself? And that's the real meaning of trust here in leadership. Right. And something that just came to my mind, Paul, is that, that these things that people can answer or how they answer these questions to themselves about you as a leader does not happen overnight. Right. And that's why we've talked so much about relationships and about the importance of connecting and building those relationships as you are going along your journey. Right. And I think that's so interesting. And I just thought of that because it's not like overnight that those things happen. Right. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely over time. Um, So there now there's three questions to ask yourself based on those other three questions. And what are the three questions we need to ask ourselves, Cheryl? Well, number one is, do I care for people? And let me tell you something. I thought everybody cared about people. I thought, (laughs) I I honestly, I really thought that because I really do care about people and I care that they, you know, that they uh, achieve their goals, that they um, can, you know, uh, rise to their potential, that they, all of these things, that they're happy, that they're joyous, that they're free, that they have peace in their life, that all of those things, I really care about that. And I do care. So I care about people. And and one of the words that I love is compassion. Are you compassionate? And think about that because Paul, it's true that there are some people that aren't. Well, like you just said, Cheryl, um, the first thing that comes to mind when, when I ask the question, do I care about people? Of course I care about people. I want to help them get better. I want to help them do this and that and that and get them what their goals are. But I would have never used the word compassion to describe me caring about people. So this has really made a big impact on me that it's about, because you need to meet people where they are and understand they've had a journey and they've had bad experiences. And now you have to have compassion for that in that I really care about your past. And that's why I think the magical words that I use and every time I meet somebody is, so tell me about yourself, mm-hmm. you know, and I want to know that and, and have that compassion to the, the tough experiences they've had in life. Mm-hmm. And when I do that, I, that's when I think people trust me. When people trust people when they, when you could, they see you care. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So that's the first question that you're going to ask yourself. Do I care about people? The second question is, can I help people? And I love this one, Paul, because you have to ask yourself that. So if somebody came to you, hey, look, I need help. Um, I need you to help me, guide me along my journey to becoming um, ultra successful. Well, if you haven't been along that journey or at least something like it, then you're not gonna be able to, you won't know how to guide them, direct them, support them and help them along their journey. Yeah. You know, that's why we created the IWH, the Institute of Holistic Health, you know, because we thought people who were joining and and recommending products to people were competent. They knew what they were doing. They knew how to help people. And we were wrong about that. So um, we put together a course that teaches people how to become competent in the area of health and wellness. You know, I mean, someone has this problem, whatever it is, health related, and you, if you do this, this, and this, all natural things, that'll, that'll fix it. You know, so we're making people competent in knowing how to help people. Um, and that's, that's where a lot of trust is going to come from is your level of competency on helping people, whatever your profession is, um, to get from where they are to where they want to go. Mm, I love that. And Yeah. And I love that question because it makes you stop and think as a leader or as a promising leader or a budding leader, right? You're on your way to becoming a leader. That's one of the big things that you will have to be able to do is to um, guide people and support them um, along their journey as they ask for your help. Okay. So number three, can people trust that I have their best interest in mind, interests in mind? Wow. Well, you know what I thought about Paul? So this is, this has everything to do with character, right? But you know what I thought? Uh, It would be best if you know what their interests are. (laughs) 
<laughs> right? So that's why good, you were just saying, good point. well, because I was thinking, how do you even know what they are if you don't ask and you don't know and you, you haven't got to that point where you can really listen and hear what, what these people need so that you can help them. Right. And so I love that. I love that. This is number three, um, you know, that you have to be trustworthy that, that you have their best interests at heart. Yeah. And right along that, that same thought pattern is the quote again from Zig Ziglar. You can have anything you want in life, as long as you help enough people get what they want. So I, you know, I'm 100% focused on, Hey, what do you want? Like, whatever it is, I'll help you get it. Like, what is the result that you want? So it's, it's, you know, I'm always hundred percent with their interest in mind. Cause I know if I help them in return, I'm going to be helped too, of course. And that's a win-win situation the way the, the world should work. Mm-hmm. Um, there shouldn't be any win-lose either direction, you know, it should be a win-win and um, uh, you know, so it's, it's always keeping their best interest in mind. And as soon as you get away from that, I think leaders run into big problems and we see that all the time. Yeah. So Paul, there's three things that we want to make people aware of, right? We want them to know that we have compassion for them. Right. Um, We want them to know that we're competent um, and able to help them get from where they are now to where they want to go. Right. And then number three is that, that you do, or that, that we do have a solid character and that, Um, and that we are trustworthy and can be trusted. Yeah, those are three big ones, you know, so it's, and so it's in their three C's. So it's compassion, competent character. Just remember Mm -hmm. those three C's you'll, you'll, uh, and focus on those. You'll get people to trust you even more. You know, so we wrote here that in the notes that, you you know, if you show people, you have these three things, you'll be a great leader. Uh, John in in the uh, chapter talks about how they invited him to speak at this conference. And they told him, listen, John, we want you to speak on business ethics. And he's like, I'd love to, but I can't. So why would he say that? (laughs) I love that, Paul. He said that because there's no such thing as business ethics. There's just ethics. Yeah. Right? It's either right or wrong. They're one and the same. Yeah. Yeah. They're one and the same. And I love that because it's not like you go to work and come home a different person, right? You're the same person and you should be same acting. Ethics. Yeah. Yeah. Say acting the same way. Um, and I love it's the golden rule, right? It's treat others as you want to be treated. I love that. That was always a big thing in my house growing up. Mm-hmm. Yep. With so, seven kids, it was hard, but. <laughs> <laughs> now, what determines if people trust us or not? believe it or not, is our values. So I thought this was interesting because I would have never kind of brought these two words together, values and trust. But um, what we're seeing, Cheryl, and this is just us being honest with the audience out there. This is our own personal opinion from from what we've seen in the world today. And this is 2022. So if you're listening to this in 2030 or whatever year it is, um, things may have changed. (laughs) But at this moment, Cheryl, especially right after COVID, we're going through a transition phase here, like trying everyone's trying to figure out which way is up. We're seeing a lot of people focused on security right now. They want to have that feeling of security because there's so much uncertainty out there in the world. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if security is number one, it is, I believe, really hard to um, move forward, I guess. Right. Or think about other people. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Right. And that's why number two is, um, everyone's thinking about themselves first and foremost, and not any, you know, not anything else, which I think is, is I have seen that to be true in, um, in the way things are right now. Yeah. I mean, for some reason, I I just know a lot of younger people because, uh, um, some people work for me that are younger. It just seems that, boy, it's all about them. You know, like they don't, they just, um, you know, have no awareness that anyone else even exists on this planet, but themselves. I mean, it is, you know, just fascinating to me, but I do think it's part of the COVID thing where you've been in isolation for so long 
and now you've with you've yourself some, by the way isolation means by yourself yeah, you you figured out a way to be by yourself and now to become a people person again is a, i think a transition so this could change yeah. but we definitely see right now people leaning towards valuing themselves and then of course shell number three is comfort yeah and and when i hear when i hear the word comfort that doesn't necessarily mean comfortable it means your comfort zone it means yeah. not getting out of what's comfortable for you which we we've learned over years and years that you have to do that if you're going to reach your goal and your goals and your potential yeah you have to get out of of the comfort zone but those are the three those are the three things that most people value but now now well, just to stop yeah. you if you have those three values and you're a leader Oh yeah. You're not going to be well. very good. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. People are not going to trust you. Right. And so the best values to have as a leader, and I think we've talked a little bit about this, Paul, but I know number one, and we always say this is growth. You know, totally. because yeah. you, if, if you don't have it, you can't give it away. That no. is the way I always think about it. So growth is the first. Uh, number two is you need to be a people person, please. It's super important, right? You can't help people if you don't value them. We talked about this already in the past. Um, so yeah. it kind of makes sense, but it's getting away from focusing on ourselves and thinking about other people. That's really where the power comes in. Yeah, absolutely. And then of course, the third one is that uh, it's challenge, you have to challenge yourself yeah so as opposed to being comfort focusing on comfort, comfort. As being a value i value we both value challenge you know so when people meet us and, and the people that are following us they know number one that we're moving forward no matter what i mean it doesn't literally it doesn't matter what's going on in the world with whatever's going on we got one direction that's forward so we're growing and growing yeah. and growing every day we're moving um i ain't got time to sit around here they know we value people. We're on here. We, we want to add value to people all the time. It's our number one, it's our only mission. And, you know, we always are looking for a challenge. You know, I, I just think it's a way that you and I live where we're looking for, you know, I can do hard things. So what yeah. are some hard things I can do today? And, you know, you, you just joined um, a 7.0 tennis league. Yeah, that's like actually 7.5, Paul. 7.5 tennis I've yeah, and, and that doesn't mean that I'm a 7.5 by any stretch of the imagination, but it means that, but, and, and the crazy thing is, is I'm like the lowest person because you can't have anyone lower than me on the team, right? Which is fine. I love that. I don't mind at all. I will rise to the occasion, but everyone's looking at me like I'm absolutely crazy that I would do that, but I want because a why? challenge. Um, uh, because, well, because they I value doing? comfort, you know, they're going to join the 5.5 league. I know I was talking to one of my friends yesterday. She's like, aren't you scared? And I said, no, I don't think scared is it. Maybe, maybe like, um, a little bit. Oh my gosh. You know why though? Because I don't want to let my teammate down because she's fantastic. Right. And that's the only feeling that I have. Right. Sure. And so that's okay because I'll play my hardest so that I don't. But just to be able to do that and to challenge yourself. And I I suggest all of you challenge yourself with something hard every single day. Paul and I try to do that every day, um, you know, challenge ourselves with something hard because it yeah. makes you feel good, right? Well, the, the, the big it. thing is the cold plunge. You know, I mean, oh. it, it does not matter how many times you do it. <laughs> That's it true. It will be a challenge every single time. That's true. And it'll hurt a little tiny bit every single time. <laughs> yeah, it does get better. But it's awesome. But it's always a chance. But it's awesome. Well, so Paul, our plus one, our plus one is the that trust is the foundation of leadership. Yes. So we really challenge you to elevate your leadership by focusing on elevating your compassion for people, becoming more competent, so whatever your profession is, to really become a master at it. And always protecting your character, being aware of, 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 of that you're being um, aware of other people's values and, and needs and not your own. Yes. And as you do these things, um, you will be able to move from fine to fabulous. Awesome. 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 
All right, everybody, we will see you on um, Tuesday. So next one is going to yeah. be on Tuesday. Um, and uh, we're excited about that. We're going to talk about identity. And then we're going to continue the, this leadership um, course uh, next Thursday with law number seven. So if you're, if you're reading the book, we encourage you to uh, read chapter seven and be prepared for next Thursday's lesson um, on the 21 laws of leadership. Have a okay. great week. Bye, everyone.